Hello and welcome back to a new lecture on English phonetics. Today's lecture is going to be about glide consonants. Ye, wa, and ra. There are three glide consonants in English, which are ye, wa, and ra. Now, what is a glide consonant? A glide consonant is a consonant that consists of a quick, smooth, non-friction glide towards the following vowel. All of these consonants, ye, wa, and ra, are always, are always followed by a vowel. Uh, there is another definition for a glide consonant, which is a consonant that is produced by bringing two articulators close together, but not close enough to cause friction or to stop the airstream. Glide consonants are also called semivowels or semivowels, which means they are phonetically similar to a vowel, but behave or functions like a consonant, i.e. they cannot constitute the nucleus, the peak of a syllable. They cannot be in the center of a syllable. Glide consonants are also called approximants. Then they are called either glides or glide consonants, semivowels or approximants. They are called approximants because they are considered as intermediate between a vowel and a consonant. An approximant is a consonant that sounds in some ways like a vowel. We will begin with the glide consonant ye. Ye is a semivowel because it is similar to a vowel but behaves like a consonant. I.e. it sounds like a vowel but it behaves and functions like a consonant. That's why it's, it's an intermediate between a vowel and a consonant, an approximant. Now ye is produced with a quick smooth non-friction glide from e or e to a following vowel for example when we say yes it's e yes yacht yacht yard yard yield yield it is always followed by a vowel the glide consonant ya yeah, occurs initially in a word such as yes Yacht, yard, yield, and medially, like beauty, or intervocalically, beauty, do, or do, few, mu, cute, suit. Ye does not occur finally in a word in British English. The glide consonant ye is phonemically described as voiced palatal glide. Ye is voiced because it is produced when the vocal cords are vibrating. Ye is palatal, place of articulation, because it is produced when the front of the tongue is raised up in the mouth, almost touching the heart palate. Ye is a glide because it is produced with a quick, smooth, non-friction glide towards a following vowel. Now, when we produce ye, yeah, there is no friction. Why? Because the two articulators does not, do not come very close together to make friction. And it is always produced when it is followed by a vowel. We say ye. Yeah, so it is produced as we start with e or e to a next vowel yacht yod yield when ye is being articulated the speech organs are in the following positions first the soft palate is raised allowing air to escape through the mouth 
and not the nose. Two, the front of the tongue is raised up in the mouth, almost touching the hard palate. Now, number three, the lips are widely spread. When the glide consonant ye is produced after p, t, or k, it loses some of its voicing because, but it preserves the turbulence. For example, pure, tune, cute. Now, the ye in these examples loses some of its voicing because of the aspiration of p, t, and k. Some English speakers pronounce ye when it comes after t as ch. For example, they say tune instead of tune. They also pronounce ye when it comes after d as j. So they say ju instead of du, ju instead of du. Some American speakers do not use ye after t, d, n, l, s, n, th. So instead of saying instead of saying tune, they say tune. Instead of saying du, they say do. Instead of saying new, they say new. Instead of absolute, they say absolute. Instead of saying suit, they say suit. Enthusiasm, they say enthusiasm. The second glide consonant is wa. The phonemic description of wa. With regards to voice, wa is voiced because the vocal cords are vibrating when it is produced. With regard to the place of articulation, wa is labiovelar because when it is produced, the lips are rounded and the back of the tongue is raised up in the mouth almost touching the soft palate the velum with regards to manner of articulation what is glide because it is produced with a quick smooth non-friction glide towards a following vowel it is always followed by a vowel so when we pronounce wa we always start with the vowel u or u one what u the glide consonant wa is a semi vowel because it is similar to a vowel but behaves phonetically similar to a vowel but behaves or functions like a consonant. It sounds like a vowel. It is also called an approximant because it is an intermediate between a vowel and a consonant. Wa is produced with a quick, smooth, non-friction glide from U to a following vowel. For example, when we say when, it's like saying we when what what one one why why it is always followed by a vowel again what occurs initially in a word for example when where what where and medially like swim tweet quiet well what does not occur finally in a word When we produce the glide consonant wa, the speech organs are in the following positions. The soft palate is raised, 
allowing air to escape through the mouth and not the nose. The back of the tongue is raised up in the mouth, almost touching the soft palate or the velum. Three, the lips are rounded. When wa comes after ta or ka, it loses some of its voicing, but it preserves the turbulence. For example, twin, twenty, quick, quiet. Wa is more difficult than ya because not too many languages have this sound like German, Dutch, and Indian languages. Some speakers pronounce words containing wa at the beginning of as hua. For example, instead of saying why, they say why, when, when, where, where. The final glide consonant is R. The phonemic description of R is voiced alveopalatal glide. R is voiced because it is produced when the vocal cords are vibrating. R is alveopalatal because it is produced when the tip of the tongue is approaching the post alveolar area behind the alveolar ridge not to not close enough to make friction however ra is glide because it is produced with a quick smooth non friction glide towards a following vowel it is always followed by a vowel When producing ra, the speech organs are in the following positions. Number one, the soft palate is raised, allowing air to escape through the mouth and not the nose. Number two, the tongue is curved in the mouth. And the tip of the tongue is approaching the post alveolar area. Number three, the lips are rounded. Types of ra. There are four different types of ra sound. The first type is called trilled r or trilled ra, where the tip of the tongue taps quickly against the alveolar ridge, like Arabic or Italian. So it sounds something like r, 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 ring, ring, rat. Number two, flat R or flat R, where the body of the tongue is low, is low in the mouth, like British English. Like for example, when we say the word car, star, ma. Number three, retroflex R, where the tongue is curved in the mouth behind the alveolar ridge. And this is found in British English and American English. For example, you can say the word car, ring, bring, father. And the fourth type is uvular R, where the back of the tongue is against the uvular. And this is found in Hebrew and French. They, they pronounce it as R, car, star. In British English, ra occurs only initially and medially in a word. For example, rest and ring, rat, reap, rope, rob. Now, and medially in the middle of the word or between vowels. Like for example, drill, trim, pray, bring, marry. In, in British English, RB received pronunciation, RP received pronunciation, RA does not occur finally, finally in a word. 
For example, car, stare, before. Also, in British English, ra never occurs before consonants. For example, sought, caught, course, turn. There are two important points to mention here. The first one is that when ra is produced after pa, ta, or ka, it loses some of its voicing. However, it preserves the turbulence. For example, we say pray, prank, try, train, cry, crowd. In British English, the second point, ra is pronounced finally in a word if it is immediately followed by a word beginning with a vowel. In this case, the ra is called Lincoln R. Now, in the first example, never again, notice that the first word never ends with a schwa, which is a vowel. And the second word again starts or begins with a schwa, therefore we must insert ra. Now, in the second, so we say never again instead of never again, never again, never again. This is not allowed. This is not possible. So we say never, 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 never again. Now, in the second example, pure ink, the first word ends with schwa, uh, with a vowel, and the second word begins with a vowel. So we say pure ink instead of pure ink, pure ink instead of pure ink. And in the, in the third example, I saw a man, the word so ends with a vowel, and it is followed by an article a, which is a vowel. So we have two vowels following each other, therefore we insert a ra. So we say, I saw a man, I saw a man, instead of I saw a man, I saw a man. It is not possible. It is not allowed. So we say, I saw a man.